Hello, how are you? This is Hina from Team Test and welcome in our first, first lecture based on Indian literature in English. You know that from today, we are starting with capsule summaries of important works related to Indian English literature. To start with, I have chosen the novel Nectar in a Sieve. Now, what is the sieve here? Sieve, chalni, it is the life. And which nectar is flowing through the sieve? It is the nectar of suffering and pain. This is a tragic novel, but then it is told in a very stoic manner. Basically, the narrator, she's very casual about her suffering. She has accepted her fate of suffering. And this is what Nectar in a Sieve is all about. Who has written Nectar in a Sieve? It is authored by Kamla Markande, who is an Indian-born British novelist. She lived from 1924 to 2004. This novel was published in the year 1954 and it is the first of Kamala's novels, okay? And the title of this novel is taken from an 1825 poem, Work Without Hope by Samuel Taylor Coleridge. So it is Coleridge's poem, Work Without Hope, from which the title of the novel, Nectar in a Sieve, is taken. This is important. So now can we start with the summary of the same? Yes, we can. I am happy and I know so are you. Setting of Nectar in a Sieve is an unnamed Indian village and the period is between late 19th and early 20th century when the Britain ruled over India. Rukmani, the story of Nectar in the Sieve is Rukmani. It is Rukmani's story, remember this. So Rukmani is the novel's protagonist and first person narrator. She is an old woman who imagines that her dead husband Nathan is sleeping beside her. Her days are spent chatting with her adopted child, Puli, and from her rural house in the village, she can see the big hospital building from a distance where her son, Selvam, works with a British doctor named Dr. Kelly. Is it till now? Rukmani is the protagonist. She dreams of her dead husband, Nathan. She talks to her adopted child, Puli, and she can sense that her son, Silvam, is working in the hospital building. She can see the building from her house. Now, and with whom does Silvam work? With a British doctor named Dr. Kelly. Now, Rukmani begins to tell the story of her life. Remember, she's old right now, and now she will tell us about her life, her journey from the start, okay, till then. So Rukmani begins to tell the story of her life stoically and the novel flashes back. Rukmani is born in a wealthy family in rural India. Her father is the village headman. She is the youngest of the four sisters and watching their luxurious weddings, Rukmani dreams of the same for herself. Remember, this is 19th century when the sole purpose of a girl was to get married and have a, you know, a good groom somebody you know who could provide for her who could give her enough money or who could who could just you know give her things women were not independent then so Rukmani also saw the weddings of her sisters and she always dreamt of that extravagant wedding but as destiny proves it her father loses his position and wealth and at the age of 12 at the tender age of 12 Rukmani is married away to a poor farmer or a peasant whose name is Nathan. But luck here is that Nathan is a good guy. So Nathan is a generous man who takes good care of his wife. And Rukmani also grows fond of her husband with whom she gradually shares a pleasant sexual relationship. A point to note here is that Nectar in a Sieve is one of the first Indian novels which openly discusses about women's sexual desires. Now, for example, Rukmani comments, A woman, they say, always remembers her wedding night. But for me, there are other nights I prefer to remember. Sweeter, fuller, when I went to my husband, matured in mind and body, not as a pained child as I did on that first night. Imagine, because see, her first night was at the age of 12. So she says that the first night was painful, but gradually I had a beautiful sexual relationship with my husband. And Kamla speaks so vividly about sex here in this novel. Okay, 1954. Soon, Rukmani becomes pregnant and gives birth to a daughter who's called Iravadi or Ira. 
But Rukmani is sad. Tell me why sad? Oh, come on. At that time, couples wanted son. Yes, everybody wanted a son because they thought, agar beta aega, to wo haath badaega, beta paisa laega. It, it was the truth then, but I'm sure this is no more the truth now, right? So now Rukmani is sad because she wanted to give a son to Nathan. A boy would help Nathan with his field work. Nonetheless, the parents begin to love their oldest daughter, Ira, who grows up beautiful and kind-hearted, beautiful in mind and body, okay? But sadly, after Ira, Rukmani cannot conceive for coming six years Okay, and her sole purpose now was to have a son, have a son, but she could not. So she went, prayed in the temples with her mother. She tried everything, but she could not conceive. But finally, she meets Kenny, a British doctor who lives and works in her village. Okay, and Dr. Kenny has come to treat Rukmani's dying mother. So Rukmani confesses her fears of infertility to him. And can you imagine, miraculously, Dr. Kenny treats treats Rukmani, after which she gives birth to five sons, one after the other. Five sons, all of, you know, all together. Let's all together know, of course, I mean, one after the other. So the names of these five sons are, remember them, Arjun, Thambi, Murugan, Raja, Silvam. It is not tough. I remember it like ATM, ATM machine, ATM and then RS. So ATM is Arjun, Thambi, Murugan. RS is Raja and Silvam. So these are the five sons of Rukmani and Natham. And their oldest child is a daughter named Ira. Okay, abhi family samaj mein aagai. Now, although the family celebrates and grows with sons, it gets difficult for Nathan to bring food on the table for so many family members. Let's change the scene. One day, young Arjun runs to tell Rukmani that change is coming to the village. What kind of change? Hundreds of men have arrived from town and they are building a tannery in the village square. What is tannery? It's basically a leather factory. You know, a chamadeki factory where they will manufacture, they'll make leather. So, you know, Arjun comes and says, Mama, these men have come with so many bricks. They are building up a building. But Rukmani is suspicious. No. Why is she suspicious? Because of these three reasons. First, the influx of workers will drive the prices of commodities up in the village. Sab kuch mehenga ho jayega. Second, it will make the town unsafe for children. And iske baad, let me tell you, Rukmani ne Ira ko marketplace mein jane se mana kar diya tha akele. So Ira was not allowed to go out alone. And third, Rukmani complains that they, they means these laborers who have come from the town, these outside people, they lay their hands upon us and we are all turned from tilling to barter. Okay. Now, here another character enters. She's an important one in the novel. She's Rukmani's neighbor, a nasty neighbor, Kunti. Kunti belonged to the city before marriage and Kunti is very happy when she hears about the tannery because she thinks that this tannery would bring more outsiders to their village, transforming this village into a small happening town with shops, tea stalls, pie scope, etc. So see the contrast. Rukmani wants a confined space, but Kunti, she wants a bigger place to stay. Yes, differences. Next. Time passes, what happens? Ira grows of marriageable age. You know it, Rukmani is not rich, right? But with a small dowry, Rukmani manages to secure a good husband for her daughter who will one day inherit a lot of land. As I told you, kaisa dhula chahiye, who will inherit land or money? Ye sab, you know, this was the parents' insecurity then because the girls were not independent, right? Now, what happens? That year, a natural disaster strikes the village. Monsoons arrive early, leading to storms and crop failure. Rukmani's family is on the brink of starvation. She stops eating so that her children can be fed. But her sacrifice is not enough. She has stopped eating, but she has so many mouths to feed. You know, they don't have food on the table. The prices of the things have gone up. They don't have money left. Monsoons have come early. All the crop is gone. It's a very tough time. Let me tell you, at that time, agriculture, that was the sole, sole, sole profession of people in the village, right? Even today, you can say in India, in village, the major profession is agriculture. And at that time, you had no other source of income. And that is what happened with Rukmani and Nathan. 
okay okay the hard times are starting and what happens five years after ira's wedding five years to rukmani's dismay ira's husband leaves her for another wife since ira could not give him a child ira is barren ira cannot bear a child ira returns to her mother and she's sad and depressed but luckily rukmani gives birth to her sixth son at this time imagine panch ladke ho gaye abhi chhatta bhi aa gaya jiska naam hai kutti bas iske baad aur koi nahi hoga so you should remember it atm rs kutti okay so rsk atm is arjun thambi murgan r is raja s is selvam and now k is kutti yes r is sons hai of rukmani and nathan So luckily Rukmani gives birth to her sixth son Kuti and Ira tends to her brother like her own son. Around this time Rukmani's oldest sons Arjun and Thambi get jobs at the tannery. They go and apply for a job at the tannery. The tannery has started functioning. They don't want to be like their father. They don't want to till. They don't want to do farming because they say that their father labors for another and gets so little in return. you should know this the land on which nathan works is not his he actually takes it on rent on lease okay or fir saal bar saal wo uh, you know he gives the rent and whatever production comes uska jo profit hai he takes right all the rukmani protests at first that you know arjun and thambi should not work at the tannery but she later realizes that with the wages the boys bring in she is able to provide better meals for the family and she starts saving up for their weddings as well okay now change in scene again one day rukmani walks into the town to consult dr kenny about ira's infertility on her way home she encounters kunti and notices that kunti is wearing a very revealing sari and she has this sandalwood paste spread sensuously over her throat what does that imply what does that imply kunti has become a prostitute she has chosen the profession of prostitution for reasons unknown understanding this rukmani hurries home arjun and thambi lose their job at the tannery because they led a labor strike demanding for a longer lunch break and rukmani is unable to understand that what are the rights of common people like you of poor people like you what is the need for you to fight look you lost your jobs just accept your conditions see this is what rukmani's attitude is in life accept the suffering that god has given you just take that nectar of suffering you know in the sieve of your life eventually what happens these two sons that is arjun and thambi they leave home and the novel's narrative to work on tea plantations in ceylon which means after this i will not take the names of arjun and thambi they have gone away from the story and from the novel as well and from here rukmani's family's disintegration begins how murugan leaves to work in a large city There is no food left in the village people are eating their scanty savings and Kunti comes to Rukmani one day and blackmails her into giving food threatening to falsely tell Nathan that you know she has an affair with Kenny so Kunti is telling Rukmani I will tell your husband that you and Kenny meet secretly but that's not the case okay Rukmani soon finds out a very bitter truth what is that truth see nathan gave away their saved rice to kunti because kunti was blackmailing nathan so finally nathan tells a bitter truth about his life to rukmani about you know and what is that truth he reveals that he has slept with kunti before and after marriage and in fact he is the father of both of kunti's sons extramarital affair rukmani is devastated but again like an orthodox you know indian housewife she actually forgives her husband she feels that they are finally free from kunti's blackmailing soon after rukmani's son raja is killed by the watchman of the tannery while trying to steal food in town there is no food in town so raja has gone to steal some food around the tannery so the watchman actually strikes and kills raja raja is killed can you imagine so atm arjun thambi and murgan gone raja killed now let's see what happens to silvam ira let's talk about ira right now ira like kunti turns to prostitution but her reason here is known why has she become a prostitute so that she can buy milk for kuti you know the smallest boy kuti 
Ira's brother. But unfortunately, Kuti dies of malnourishment. Raja dead, Kuti dead. Ira a prostitute, the three other sons gone. Rukmani is devastated. Nathan is angry. Ira gets pregnant out of wedlock, out of her, you know, from her profession. She's pregnant with an illegitimate child. And Rukmani's only son now with her, Selvam, plans to apprentice with Kenny, who is building a new hospital in the town. And over time, Selvam becomes more knowledgeable than his parents and takes on so many of Kenny's beliefs. And what are Kenny's beliefs? You can have your life changed for the better. You should always strive for better in life. See here in Nectar in a Sieve, Kenny is showed as the colonizer, okay? He knows how to benefit from a situation. While Rukmani is showed as the colonized, as suppressed, as someone who, ex you know, who can't express, as someone who accepts her situation. So take Rukmani as India and take Kenny as Britain then. That's how the novel distinguishes these two characters, okay? Now, Unable to pay the rent of the land who he works on, Nathan is informed by the land agent Shivaji that the landlord has sold their plot to the tannery and they have only two weeks to move out, which means just land pay they were farming, just land pay they were living, this land will no more be theirs. It has been given away to the tannery. Devastated, Rukmani and Nathan travel to the large city where their son Murgan is living. They are going to Murgan for help. They are thinking that Murgan will give us shelter. In the city, thieves steal all their possessions and money. They meet a street child named Puli, who directs Rukmani and Nathan to Koli, Koili Street, Koil Street, where Murugan lives. But to her shame, Rukmani discovers that Murugan has run away from his wife, Amu, and their child, disowning his obligation to provide for them. So Murugan has not proved to be a good husband. Murugan has left his wife, Amu. So now Rukmani thinks, Ki ye to bichari khudi mere pote ko sambhal rahi hai, mere, you know, uh, she's taking care of my grandchild. How will she take care of me and, you know, my husband, Nathan? The Rukmani now has no place to go in the city. She's clueless. And in order to survive in the city, she takes several jobs. First, she works as a scribe and a reader in the marketplace, but there's no much success because people can't accept that a girl can read. And second, she and Nathan work at a stone quarry on the suggestion of Puli, because of which they're able to get some money and save. Over time, Rukmani and Puli form a familial bond, a family bond. And she suggests to take him to her village as, his, as her adopted son. Okay, so Rukmani wants to adopt Puli here. But before they could reach the village, Rukmani finds Nathan burning with fever and Nathan dies the next day. Oh, tragedy strikes, tragedy strikes, right? This is the nectar of tragedy, the nectar of suffering coming into the life of Rukmani. So now Rukmani's husband, Nathan, is also dead. But she gets a son, Puli. Rukmani has accepted her tragic fate all these years. Accepting her destiny, she and Puli return to the village where Selvam and Ira welcome her and their new brother Puli with content and joy. They wish for a better future. And we are done with Nectar in a Sieve. How did you like it? The first of the capsule summaries of Indian literature in English. If you, if you really liked it, I want a comment in the section below. Okay. And if you want another important works, obviously I have my list ready. But if you have something in your list, a novel based on this genre, you can definitely message us. Okay. This is Hina from Team Test. Take care of yourself. Thank you so much for being with me.